This might look like a very nondescript hotel in a fairly unprepossessing industrial estate in the middle of France. And you would be right. However, this is actually currently home to some of the very best bike riders in the entire world. And that's because the Tour de France regularly stays in place like this. Luxury hotels are unfortunately not often on the menu on this three week stage race. So we thought we'd take a little snoop around and show you just what a team hotel is actually like. Before we go inside, a lot of the action is actually out here in the car park. Let's come and take a look. Around the back of the Campanile, this is like a cycling fan's wet dream. We've got two teams staying here. We've got Lotto Bellasol and Team Sky and all of their infrastructure is around here at the back. So we've got two team buses, we've got two mechanics trucks, we've got one chef's truck for Lotto Bellasol, we've got all their team cars, their VIP cars, everything. So this is where it's all happening. Now, you'll also see the hose pipes snaking around across the car park and that's because the teams sometimes have to fight to get their water supply which feeds the mechanics trucks, the washing machines, the team buses, everything like that. So it's often a race to get here earliest so that they actually get the prime position in the car park. It's a race within a race. It's the unknown hidden Tour de France. Right then, should we go and take a snoop around inside? Just behind me here is the room list. And what this is, is the key to where all the riders are staying. Now, there's an awful lot of names on here, and that's because it's the same room list for every single race. They just fill in the gap next to the riders who are here. But it means that the riders don't actually get lost. They can always find their own room and also the Swanier's room, which is room number 10. Room 10. Right, let's see who we can find. Hello. Adam Hansen, lots of LSL. Adam, can we come in? Sure. Good stuff. Welcome. Nice to see you. Come in. Right, so this is a rider's room, but there's two of you in here, right? Mm -hmm. That's right, there's two of us, always two per room, and if one um, guy crashes and makes an odd number, then there's one guy per room. Okay, so who are you rooming with, actually? Lars Buck. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Cool. And for three weeks? Three weeks, same guy. How do you guys get on? Uh, we get along very well. I've roomed with him in the Giro, and now on the tour and also ZLM so we're good room partners. What's the etiquette in terms of like lights out at a set time or does one of you have, wear an eye patch? Um, that's a good question. I always stay up later. So Lars gives me a 15 minute warning. So <laughs> he always says 15 minutes. I said okay. So I got to prepare, just pack everything because I know the lights will go out in 15 minutes. He has earplugs in and he has a, like a, a face mask. So. I can have the lights on and everything, but um, I do have the lights off just for his respect, but I make sure that I'm well prepared because if the lights do go off and I've got stuff everywhere, I try and pack it up so I can just go to bed. And do you abide by international standards of lights off in the bathroom, even in the middle of the night? Of course, lights off in the bathroom. <laughs> um, important things we pack is power adapters because oh, nice. rooms usually only have one port and we have laptops phones srms things like this where you have your phone your laptop charging laptops are very important internet connection is very important for riders it's not always good though so obviously we have our main suitcase suitcase gets packed up in the morning um we get a time before we go to the race so let's say if we have to leave for the race at 10 o'clock so the bus leaves the suitcases usually have to be ready by nine and then we have a carry-on bag and that's basically just got um day's race stuff his heart rate strap and whatever you, gloves and stuff like that just for the one day race and i couldn't help but notice there's a set of weighing scales outside your door now those are team weighing scales right but what's what's the deal well i'll show it to you if you want yeah okay right so this is just a communal corridor but i guess this is all lotto bellasol down here right that's right so um this is basically our corridor um and it's, it sounds strange but we do make it feel like it's our home like the whole hotel um, we know that we're the only riders here, usually it always at the hotels. So um, if it's late in the evening we want to go to someone else's room and we're just in our boxer shorts, we'll just walk freely past in our boxer shorts or come out and this is basically the kitchen. So it's free for the riders, as, as you can see, like you said before, the scales. Half the riders don't use them, <laughs> they're too afraid to, <laughs> but they're there just to... <laughs> Make you think twice about the food you take. Next to the bowl of fruit, which is uh, very fitting. In this one we've got drinks. Um, Aquarius, which is like, uh, uh, it's a sports drink, water, a lot of Coke Zero, so we don't put on too many calories. And here we have um, just the fruit basically, apples, bananas, and then we have fresh fruit cut up from our cook. We have rice pudding, which is very, very nice. It's just been put there. And then in here is um, basically just snacks. As you can see, we've got Haribo, which um, doesn't last very long. We have um, soya pudding, which is very good for the non-lactose people. Rice cakes, muesli bars, 
some very, very healthy cereal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the food of champions. That's right. Champions we are. <laughs> Great stuff. Some fascinating insights there, Adam. Thanks very much. We'll let you get back to uh, putting your feet up. Thank and, you. Uh, yeah, thanks for that.